Stephanie, WDAY AM and 93.1 FM. I think it's more than a little creepy. I think you're absolutely nuts. I think you're blowing it out of proportion. Where Fargo-Moorhead comes to talk. The opinions expressed on the J. Thomas Show are the opinions of the host, participating callers, and or listener emails, texts, and or letters, and are not necessarily the opinions of WDAY or Forum Communications. WDAY 970 AM and 93.1 FM invites you to make your opinion known. We pride ourselves on exploring all viewpoints on any topic. Do you know who I am? I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. People know me. I'm very happy for you. Well, it's a week getting Friday, and here we are. Where are you? I'm here in the studio. Kyle's here. I'm here. Under there. Becky Parker's over there. Kirsten Gilly's up there. She'll be down here later. John Wheeler's over there. He'll be here in a little while. We got it going on, brother. We got it going on. Rob Port, uh, he's here. I'm here. Even though it's Friday, usually we talk to him on Monday, but uh, going to talk to him about a story he broke yesterday. It's got uh, a lot of people uh, uh, wanting some answers and asking questions. We'll get to that in a second. Hey, uh, do you guys know that uh, Mike Cappell's producer and uh, cohort in the morning of Marlon Wells, you know he's a stand-up comedy? Or comedy. Yeah, he's a stand-up he's a, comic. He's a walking comedy. He's a stand-up comedian. I did not know that. He's going to join us at 2.35. He landed a big gig at the uh, Fargo, uh, what was it, Fargo Comedy Fargo, Fest? Fargo Theater. Yeah, it's tonight. Uh, he's going to be opening up for a couple pretty big names. A uh, couple national acts, yeah. yeah some very cool. well-known people that have their own comedy specials on. Well, the one guy, uh, it's one, he's one of those people that if you said his name, you, you, who? But if you saw his face, bam, you know who he is. Is that Brian? Is it, is it Posen? Is that how you pronounce that uh, dude's last name? I believe Posen, so. Posen, Posen. Marlon will know. Yeah, he's uh, th- this guy's. He's he's constantly got parts in movies and television shows and stuff. So uh, Marlon will join us in a little bit. And I keep getting hounded. Well, I, I'm sorry. Let me let me take that back. I should say it because I, I I don't mind when you when you when you get a hold of me and you got concerns. I keep getting asked uh, if I'll bring John Wheeler back on uh, today. A lot of people. Uh, I don't know about up there, mine out, Rob, but down here. They're just concerned. They, they see all this snow piled up out there, and they're concerned about what's going to happen in the spring. Now, I believe we are far, far away from any flooding, but they're, like, worried about their basements and everything else. And according to John Wheeler, there's just not a whole lot of water content in this snow. How much snow do you guys get up there in Minot? I know you got to oh, hit geez. a couple good times pretty I, hard, I, too. I, I don't know. Other than clearing I mean, my driveway. You... Other than clearing my driveway, I've been ignoring it for the most part. But, I mean, I mean when you're looking out the windows, same thing, big piles of snow. Oh, yeah. Oh, we haven't piles. had this in a while. Yeah, yeah we haven't no. had this in we a while. We even while, drive so. around town. Like, some of the intersections are, are kind of yeah. – visibility is kind of tough. And, yeah. Yeah, same thing here. It's part of winter. All right, listen, eight minutes after 2 o'clock. It's a weekend and Friday. There's always a bunch of topics to toss out. We hope you respond to them. Two nine three nine thousand or toll free one eight 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 nine seven zero nine three two nine. You can email us talk at wday dot com. And again, uh, we're having a conversation on this program. Whether it's uh, myself, uh, uh, you know, just talking to myself, or if I'm talking to Kyle or Rob or any guests I have on or any topic, people, you're more than welcome to jump in uh, and uh, hang out with us and be part of the conversation. All right, Rob Port. I usually do you on Monday, but I just I, I had to bring you on today because I think that this uh, story that. You broke is starting to really uh, gain some uh, attention and, and, and some legs, and this has to do with uh, UND's president, uh, Mark Kennedy's chief of staff up there. What is it? Angelique Foster is her name. Yeah, and she. Um, it, it, let, let me say this: by no means am I belittling Angelique because I say kudos. Hey, if you can get this gig. More power to you. Well, me, if you can get yeah. more ra- raises, more power to you, Angelique. Hey, good for you. More, but- and let me let me add to that. Every person that I've talked, I've spoken to who has worked with her directly mm-hmm. says she's a great person. She yeah. does a very good job. So I'm not. My intent here is not to besmirch her or, or to suggest no. that she's done anything necessarily wrong. Uh, I wouldn't say no uh, if 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 an employer is offering me a cushy compensation package. I'm probably not saying no either. The issue that people are having, and I know that that you were contacted by uh, sources up at or people at UND, uh, they're upset that the, the whole situation with her, she was going to resign, and then they kept her on, said, you know what, you can work from your home in Texas, 
and we're going to still pay $114,000 a year. We're going to give you, you know, we're going to pay probably twenty five plus thousand a year for travel expenses so you can come up uh, back and forth when we need you up here. And, again, kudos to her, man. More power to you. You can get a gig like that. I mean, fantastic. I, I don't uh, begrudge her any of this. But uh, people are asking, asking basically, Rob, what? Yeah. So so let me give you the timeline here, first of all, because yeah. I think I think to set this up, um, Mark Kennedy, uh, President Kennedy, had a um, he she worked for him at Angelique Foster, worked for him at George Washington University when he came to the University of North Dakota in 2016. How long, how long was she with him for before coming here? You know, I, I don't I don't I, I think going back to 2012. Okay, I, I know I had. Signed, I don't. I don't. I don't know the I exact date, but but, but but my yeah. understanding is is going back to 2012. Okay, so, so they've had a, they've had a professional relationship. Uh, so he comes to UND in 2016. Um, he then hires her in uh, at UND as a special assistant to the president at a salary of eighty thousand dollars a year. Um, okay. In 2000, I think it's June 1st, 2017. Uh, she gets a probationary uh, pay raise, uh, relatively modest, up to a four thousand dollar a year raise, up to eighty four thousand dollars a year. Now, okay. here's where it gets interesting. November first of last year, November first, two thousand eighteen, uh, she gets a promotion to chief of staff, and she gets a thirty thousand dollar a year raise, putting her up to one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars a year, which is where she's at now. Okay. Six days later, six or seven days later, roughly a week later. Uh, UND puts up a blog post announcing that she has been awarded the President's Medal, which I guess is an award that the president of UND gives out. It's a non-academic, but it's it's some sort of a recognition award. Uh, she wins this this medal, and there's a whole thing about it, how she's great, everything else, and it says that she's going to be leaving UND at the end of the spring semester. Okay, fine. Okay. The thing is, is, if she's leaving at the end of the spring semester, why six days previous did she get a raise? Why did why did why did she get a thirty thousand dollar year raise if she's leaving in May? Now, now the... and now and now here's the thing: we go to this week, and suddenly it becomes that well, never mind. She's not leaving. She's going to stay as chief of staff, and she's going to work from Texas. And in addition to one hundred fourteen thousand dollar a year salary, she's also going to get twenty five up to. $25,000 a year to travel back and forth from Texas to UND to do her job. Um, you know, they're estimating that it's going to be about $1,000 a trip, which, you know, I guess if she used all $25,000 a year, that'd be roughly, roughly about a trip, trip every other week, right? Roughly, yeah. Yeah. Now, so did. I, I got to believe they kept her on because she's worked with. With Kennedy for, you know, since approximately 2012. Right. So she knows him. He knows her. They they, they work well together. Um, did this job ever, I suppose this job never did uh, uh, come up for application. They never posted this job. Well, I, I mean, as far as I know, no. I, they, if, I, I, think the, I think the position was created for her. I mean, she... She didn't fill a position. She didn't take over for somebody else. Yeah. She was hired a special special assistant, and then her job title was changed to chief of staff, and then she got a raise with that. Now, what's interesting is when I when I asked UND about this, and this, this is the part that I think a lot of people are having trouble understanding, She, um, I asked them, I said, well, how can you justify this expense? And they justified it by saying, well, she um, – it would still be cheaper because we did an analysis, and I'm waiting for them to give me this analysis. But they said they did an analysis of chiefs of staff in the region, and they found that that those people make anywhere from $189,000 a year up to over $200,000 a year for a chief of staff of a president at a public university, um, which might launch us into a whole other discussion about the salaries that we're paying at these public universities. Yeah. But whatever. Let's set that aside for a moment. Um if that's true, she just got moved. Like just just in November, when she was leaving, they moved her up to chief of staff. So I mean, all of a sudden, we're using this chief of staff job title to do this analysis to say that we couldn't possibly hire somebody else cheaper because this is the price range for what people in that position. She just got that title reassigned to her, and so it feels like we're playing some games with with definitions and with job titles and stuff to sort of justify after the fact. The, the salary and this this you know pr pretty unusual travel arrangement. Now, chief of staff is I mean, 
Well, hold on. Let, let me take a break here. Come back. I, I want to know exactly what the, that job entitles. It, it, just so, it just so happens I have the official oh, okay. position okay. description right in front of me, so we can do that. All right. All right. I got a question about that when we come back. If you uh, have any questions or comments, 293-9000, toll free, 1-888-970-9329. This is the Jay Thomas Show. Fargo Morehead. And later on, uh, we got to help uh, Kyle out. Our little, uh, our little Kyle is growing up. He's, he's, he's going to be a curler. And you need, uh, you want to, well, you, you want some help with a name for your curling team. You start curling on Tuesday, right? Yeah, I mean, I've curled since I was in middle school. Well, come shit, it's drum, it's. Come on, it's for the radio. Come on, man. And you don't have to be mind. grown up to like curl. Come on, sh- just so. stop, buddy. Come on, I'm, I'm trying. To, I'm trying. I'm to, seasoned I'm trying, at curling. Is I'm just stop trying to make it sound like I'm a rookie here. You're only in your 30s. How can you be seasoned? Because I've been doing it since I was like 13. Started when I was two. All right. So you need a name for your team. Doing it for over half my life. Oh, okay. Well, it's true. All right, all right. Just trying to have a little fun, man. I'm gonna put salt in my game. Because I want to, people to know that you can start curling when you come out of the womb. I mean, come on. He, Kyle came out of the womb with a rock in his hand. Man. Well, with a broom, yeah. With a broom. In, <laughs> with, with, what, what, what is Led Zeppelin saying? I with do, a broom in one. How do you think I came out? Sliding on that. And a purple colored rock sweeping. in the other. Yeah. All right. For Rob Port, say anything, blog.com. Uh, call us for him, communications, playing talk podcast. All right. So what is the uh, what is the job description there for the the uh, – what is it? The um, uh, ah, it's I'm blanking it out. The chief of staff. That's yeah, it for the well, president at UND. So, so this is what UND provided me. It's a position mm-hmm. description, uh, and it identifies the duties, responsibilities, and task inventory. And it's also eight pages long. So I'm not going to read this. Oh whole my thing god! To you. No, it, don't. And a lot of it's gobbledy. Let me let me read you the first couple. The chief of staff reports to the president and will serve as a member of the senior staff, contributing to the strategic institutional discussions and planning. In addition to serving as the chief of staff, this position is committed to our liberal arts mission and will provide partnership, in, input, insight, and resources to the senior leadership team. In addition, serve as an advisor to the president and as a liaison to academic and administrative, blah, 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 blah. So there's a whole bunch of Stop stuff it. like that. But here's, here's, this, is, this is interesting. The chief of staff serves as a visible leader across campus with the ability to balance and influence multiple competing priorities or individuals. A mm-hmm. visible leader. Here's some, That's what I was waiting to hear. Here's something else. Attend meetings with the president. Take appropriate notes. Coordinate action items and follow up to coordinate and track progress. Work collaboratively with and be a resource for senior leadership team while reporting directly to the president to advance the University of North Dakota institutional goals. Convene and set agendas for the leadership team meetings. Some of that could do you remotely, but I don't know. I mean, how, how, are, sure. you, how are you a visible leader on campus? Visible leader. How are you yeah. attending meetings and taking notes? If you're if you're not there, and and I understand, some, okay, okay, maybe, some, okay, maybe maybe she could Skype in or whatever, yeah, for the meeting. But I mean, what about like coordinating with people before the meeting and after the meeting? And I mm. mean, it's just it's hard to imagine doing that job effectively from Texas. Here's my question: So this UND spokesman David Dodds is at it, yeah, that's uh, nice. said that uh, he's quoted in in your story. We conducted a search for a chief of staff. And as part of uh, the process, we learned that the position among higher education institutions in our region and peer group run 185,000 as a median and 225 as an average. So, so he's saying we, so, so he's claiming they conducted a search for a chief of staff? Well, they, I, what, my understanding is they did an analysis because they decided. Uh, he's, 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 well, he says we conducted a search. Yeah, it's right here. I'm looking right at. I it. think I'm, I'm so. from 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 going back and forth with him. My understanding is what they did was they did an analysis when they when they were putting together. Uh, I I imagine what would be like a job opening, because you know she she's never actually left the job. She was supposed to leave in May, mm-hmm. but now she's staying on. Yeah. So my understanding is they did like an analysis where they looked at okay, you know, what should we advertise for in terms of a salary. And then decided. Now, I, I'm asking for more information about this. You know, I, I've said, can you give me this analysis? I'd like to see what you did this for. Because they also, he also told me that they did this for several, when, when they gave her the raise, that they did this for several other positions at, at the university. Where they did this and they found, oh, all, the, all these people that are working in other universities are making a bunch more money. So, we better adjust all these people's job titles and salaries. Which is a hell of a way to do business. I mean, I don't know why you would just start raising salaries because somebody in another part of the country or another part of the region 
is making more. Well, I mean, well, that's not a problem. You'll just keep raising, you just keep raising uh, tuition rates. That's not well, a problem. Well, mean, we'll meanwhile, meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, you have you people have afford to go to college. Well, yeah, there's that. But meanwhile, you have employees <laughs> at, at at UND who haven't gotten a raise in several years. Yeah. You have people who've been losing their jobs because they've been going through budget cuts at UND. Now, I, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I've long been an advocate for the fact that we need some austerity at the universities because. You know, they get carried away. But I think for Kennedy, it's pretty tough to say, well, all of this is going on while people are losing their jobs, while, you know, faculty and, and other administrators aren't getting raises. You know, they're, they're not even getting like cost well, of living cut, raises. They I cut mean, the girls' hockey. They cut the yeah, girls' cut hockey. The girls I mean, hockey they cut the, the pro- and, and again, I didn't have a problem with them cutting the girls' hockey team. But I mean, if, if, if that's where you're at and you're defending policy choices like that, how do you turn around and say, well, I just gave. My, you know, special assistant, I just moved her up to chief of staff and gave her a $30,000 year raise. And, oh, now she's working from Texas, so we're going to pay $25,000. So, so, yeah, so <laughs> technically what, what what they're paying for this position right now is is not $114,000. It's more like closer to $140,000. 139000 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And was it somewhere I, I, I read or coming? Also, also, an interesting thing is that quote you just read, when they did the yeah. analysis, he said that they looked at total compensation for those positions. Now, now when I okay. hear the term total compensation, to that's me, that's health insurance. That's everything. health insurance. That's pension. That's whatever else in terms of benefits may be off. Her salary is one hundred fourteen thousand dollars a year. That's not counting her state health benefits. That's not mm. counting pensions or any other fringe benefits. So, I'm not sure if, when we're comparing those things. That's apples to apples. I mean, to to me. What caught me was was the fact that you know you're the chief of staff. I, I honestly, yeah, this stuff you can do. Some of it you can do remotely. And again, and this is nothing against Angelique. Yeah, he, no. she got the gig. More power to her. Good for you, girl. I mean, you know what? More power to you. But I mean, it just it it, it looks bad. I think if you're the chief of staff, you need to you need to be here on location, especially when you have to be a visible leader in this job. And and you're telling. And if their whole argument is that we just we can't find, you know, if, if we go outside or, or look somewhere else, we're going to have to pay one hundred eighty-five to two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. You're telling me that you can't find one person in the state of North Dakota qualified to do this job at for what they're for a, what they're paying her at one hundred fourteen thousand dollars a year in benefits. By the way, median household income in the state of North Dakota in two thousand seventeen was sixty-one thousand dollars. Yeah, so. Uh, I, I don't know. I feel like there might be plenty of people that you could bring in who could do this job. And, and I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe Kennedy just really likes working with Angelique. But I would think that somebody, you know, with his level of experience working at his level had better figure out how to work with somebody else. Like if this well, person moves on, figure it you out. Just, you may you just, just need to let it go. Out. You just took the word. I was I was just about to say, Rob, the same thing. You're at that level. People are going to come and go. And you're right. You need to learn. You need to be able to work with other people. Chris Fargo, Jay Thomas Show. Hey, I just wanted to make a comment just yeah. kind of in general yeah. about uh, uh, things like this with universities. Yeah. Um, what bothers me, I see these things come up, you know, we see them come up from time to time, whether mm-hmm. it's when they're looking to hire a president or some high-level executive at these universities, you know? Yeah. It's. It seems like you always hear the same thing about how, oh, gosh, you can't just find anybody to do this job. You. you can't just find anybody Thank with you. the skills and the this and the that, and we've got to do this national search, and we've got to pay them millions and millions of dollars. And, and all i got to – I mean, what I don't understand is are these skills really that specialized that we have to pay people – massive salaries well, to do these jobs or is this all I, a bunch of good old boys the, the caller buddy, the buddy caller crap. is hitting the nail on yeah. the head we have we have done all of this where we 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 think that these university presidents have to be these like visionary gurus they're administrators all right yeah. I, I mean i'm not it's an important job but i mean we're getting carried away also you know what would help more promoting from within Thank you. Thank you know, let me stop. Let me stop you right there because Kyle and I were having this discussion in my office. Thank you for that, uh, Rob Port and Chris. I, the, I am so sick and tired of you get big positions like this, whether it's at the universities. I'll give you a prime example. Uh, West Fargo's police chief. I, I love him. I, I love Heath. I think he's doing a fantastic job. But I was upset that that they went from 
instead of going from within at the West Fargo Fire Department or a police department to find a chief and there were plenty of people qualified, they go somewhere else. That doesn't send a good message uh, at all. Well, it's we, like, we you spent, know what? You can't, you, can't, you can't grow in this we, business. Same thing with the university. Jay, we, we form, the, we form these search committees. We pay consultants yeah. six-figure fees uh, to come up with lists of candidates for us. How well is that working out? Look at all the problems we've had with chancellors in the university system, oh, yeah. with university presidents. I mean, is, is this process working? Are we really finding the right talent by this? I, oh, I think I, I think maybe if we humbled everybody a little bit, promoted more within, we'd, we'd honestly we'd do a better job. Well, I mean, guys, l- let's take a look here at w- what are we pushing? How do we keep people in North Dakota? What are we going to do to get people to come here? What are we going to do to get people to stay here? Well, examples like this are not helping. No. You know what I mean? You're telling me you can't find one person in the state of North Dakota that can do this chief of staff job. You couldn't find one person in the state of North Dakota to do this job. You know what I'm I just you both nailed it on the head. Chris, appreciate it, brother. Yeah, no problem. Rob, I'm going to let you rock and roll. Anything else uh, coming out on this or um, waiting to get some more info? Or, yeah. No, I'm waiting to get some more info. There may be more developments, but right now I've got some requests and we'll see what happens next. Hey, I did want to say uh, yep. m- uh, Monday's episode of Plain Talk is going to be a debate over civil asset for forfeiture. Prosecutor oh. Lad Erickson versus defense attorney Mark Freeze. It's Ooh. a good one. You're going to want to oh. listen to it. Oh, Freeze is always good. Man. He's really He's always awesome. good. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be your. What, when is that going to be? Uh, up on Monday. Monday. Monday morning it'll drop. Monday morning. And then well, you and I will talk Monday afternoon. We we'll may have to touch on that. All right. All right. Uh, thanks, Rob. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend, buddy. Thank you.